The presidency has tackled the governor of Ondo State, Rotimia Kiridolu, over his orders asking all herders to vacate forest reserves in the state within seven days. Garba Shehu, the senior special assistant to the president, Muhammad Buhari, on media and publicity, in a statement encouraged the state government to tackle all forms of criminality, but not to breach the rights of herders in the state. Governor Kiridolu had earlier given an ultimatum while meeting with leaders of Hausa, Fulani and Ebira communities while citing how the activities of these herders was threatening the security of the state. What's well, joining us to have this conversation is Mr. Kalawale and he's joining us live from Abuja. Mr. Kalawale, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Kalawale, Kalawale Johnson is a communication strategist. Now, I, I did just briefly tell you about this situation. It's more, more like the second big story in the country today where, with the presidency and, of course, the government of Ondo State somewhat in a war of wards, per se. Um, let me start by listing some of the situations in Ondo State. Um, the governor in his statement said he was going to reject these herdsmen. He also said he, he was banning them from the state reserves. He had banned underage grazing. He had um, also banned night grazing, movement of cattle within the cities and the highway. He also gave a seven days ultimatum to these herdsmen to comply with. What is wrong with this order? What is wrong with this stand that has been taken by Governor Kiridulu? Because there's a lot of, I mean, there, there seem to be uh, different sides to it. There are people who are for it and there are people who are against it. As a communications strategist, what exactly do you think is wrong with this, if there be anything wrong with it? Well, the question you ask me now, perhaps I'll answer uh, from a professional angle, is the fact that, first, in setting agenda for public discourse, it starts by telling the news correctly. Then the second phase is for you to set or to take people's attention to what you want them to think about the news. Mm. Then, the thought, which is the tripod, is how they perceive it, which also still comes from you. Now, I want to suggest, or I want to say clearly that it appears that uh, the gatekeepers may not be getting the actual narrative correctly. Now, let me give, give you what the governor said. Thank God people know that I've criticized him a lot of times, so we are not friends. <laughs> <laughs> but truth is always true. The governor said, that the earthmen should vacate forest reserves. Forest reserves. Note that he did not say they should vacate the state. Of course. He said they should vacate the forest reserve. And one thing you must understand is that both in, if an indigent rest or those who are, are residing in the state, nobody is permitted. Mm -hmm. to go into forest reserves for any activities, for any economic activities without permission of the state. You have departments in the state ministry of agriculture responsible for that. I can speak in this because I had, in fact, we had, well, oh, we had cases some years back where we needed to beg the state government for some people that went to jail, or, or some that paid a lot of points because they were farming in the forest reserve. These guys were indigent. They were people who are residing, who are from the state. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of them paid fine, and some, they are crops. Of course, they have to forget it in the forest because they did not get permission. So, if people from the state are complying with the laws, that you cannot do anything in the forest reserve without permission. Is it not a crime to enforce that same law for all that set of people who come into the state only that move into the forest for their economic activities on in that? Now go into farmland anyway, we'll get that. Now they 
are already flouting the laws of the state. Mm. So the governor says, in fact, let me not say the governor, the government says that from the security report we have, from the debriefings we have, from, uh, from victims of kidnappings. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that just on Saturday, the deputy registrar of Futa got killed. Don't forget that uh, we have, in fact, I, I can list to you some series of kidnapping that these guys come from the forest reserve, the perpetrators, they, they take people into these reserves. And some are killed in my community, in my local government. My king was killed. Mm. Just alone, they came from the bush, they killed him, and they went inside the bush back again. I give you a case of a young man preparing for his wedding who was going to visit his in law on the road, very close to my community. In fact, my ward, per se. He was taken into the bush, into the forest. Alas, his brother brought ransom. They collected the ransom, they seized his brother. Now, they demanded for another ransom. Please, the two of them did not make it. They were killed, and they took one from two times. Mm. So the government said, we have looked at all of this. So that these guys are hiding in the forest. Ask men, don't mix yourself with them. Come out of the forest. One. Number two, it is even illegal for you to be in the forest reserve of the state. So mm. come out of there, and we'll give you seven days ultimatum for this to be done. Now, is this a crime? No. Number two, what did the governor say again? He said ninth basin is banned. Mm -hmm. And there is a specific reason for that. He said because farm destruction takes place at night. I have a friend who invested not just his money alone, all that people's money into farmland, all wasted. Nothing was done. Now, a colleague of ours is also in this industry. He is presently a GM of a station. He came from Dublin, invested in farmland the first year. Now, brought back the proceeds. He's not been able to farm again now because for three years consecutively, they kept destroying his farm. In fact, he came out at a time to cry that he had not just made losses of his own personal money, even the money he brought that he borrowed. Now, I can cite another example of a young man who, who wanted to retire back to Nigeria? He brought money. Now, got engaged in farming, large farmland. Again, these same people destroyed the farmland. Okay. He's back. He's back now, and in his old age, he's going back inside the cold weather to start suffering again. Okay, Mr. Kalawale. Uh, hold on, please. Hold on, please. Because some elders destroyed his farm. So the governor said, night grazing is bad. So that we do not, we should not be having this issue of destruction of farmland. Remember, this is a very strong economic power. Thank you me. are increasing your own economic base and you are destroying other people's economic base by destroying their own farmland. Again, you still kidnap them, the little they have at home, you take it from them. Personally, I contributed to ransom last year for a couple of times. And the last one I did was 420,000 naira. It was tough. That's only 1,000 or 12. To tell you that we ran fast everywhere to be able to pay that. So let's. Now, let's this is to tell you, okay? I mean, I'm sure that we can, you can give us so many instances because you obviously are pretty aware of this. But let's, let's move away from this and, and take a look at the messaging that came from the presidency uh, in the person of Garba Shehu. Now, that statement that was issued, what tone is it sending across? Because um, Garba Shehu succinctly said, well, the governor has a right to fight crime and criminality, but you know, he has no right to um, sack herders from his state. And thank you very much for re reiterating what I said at the beginning, that most people do not understand that the, they were not said asked to leave the state but they were asked to leave the grazing reserve so let's address the statement from the presidency now it is obvious that uh garbage shield did not get the message correctly and this is a sign of sentiment shown clearly in my profession as a pr person we call something schemata 
Shimata is a, a state of the mind that through which you interpret whatever comes. Now, if theft or if robbery is committed, or let's say normal theft in the office is committed in the office, and you have a person who has that tendency to steal or who has stolen before, you, it's the first person you will suspect. Now, because of the schemata you have in your heart. Now, if Garba Shil, with a friend called Garbage Shil, if he had looked into the message very well, without sentiment, he would have seen clearly that the government said he should leave the forest reserve. He did not evict them from the state. Now, that shows you the sentiment that they display. Now, does this not tell you that they have turned themselves to the spokespersons of criminals. Now, let me ask. He said that uh, the presidency, right, has been studied. Who is this presidency? Let's ask them again. I think it was uh, 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 Lower, you know, his name, the SDF, ex SDF, that asked, who is this presidency? We should be clearly. Now, because if he was speaking for the president, he would have made it clear that the president said, but clearly he was not speaking for the president. But Mr. Kola the, the presidency obviously, the presidency obviously is the president. hold on, dear friend, dear friend, hold on. Okay, well, presidency we... that did not meet, where did they meet? So who are those? Where did they meet? The, pres the, the presidency is under, what hours, is under the president, obviously. The and all of these people the who order. speak for the presidency work yeah, for the, the president, including the order. Garba Shehu. See, this is a highly... This, this is a state issue. It is not what a spokesperson just go out to comment on. I can tell you because this is our profession, and I can be very open to you here. If he knows his job, for a, I mean, for such a topic like this, for such a subject like this, involving a state government, involving security of lives and properties, you do not just talk anyhow. You, in fact, you take express directive. That's why you talk. As a matter of fact, you will want to take quotations. So that you won't make a mistake, because this can cause security breach across the country. Now, it is easy for him when uh, bandits are ravaging Castilla. It is it is it is it is permissible for him to come out to tell us that oh, you can see that uh, the the president there is no partial as they are ravaging other places. They are also ravaging the state, even when he wasn't around there. No problem, he can say that. But this is our own state. Can I go? to Castilla and just clear farmland and start farming without talking to the community, without taking permission. The same thing, some people came into a reserve area and they are raising there, nobody disturbed them, but the moment we started, uh, but the moment criminalities are coming from the same area that they are, we said, no, please come out so that the criminals who are hiding under you would no longer have this, uh, have, have the impetus. Now, the, the next thing that they, uh, that they did from the presidency was to reply directly. They could not reply in fast, in days, in weeks, but they could do this under 24 hours. Now, is it not a very bad omen hmm. that the government has turned the order, that the spokesperson of the president has, has turned himself to the spokesperson of criminals that we are trying to reject? Now, where was Garo Bashir? Let's ask this very salient question. Let me... Where was this same guy? So, it was, no, let me, let me ask some few questions, perhaps, that, uh, that will resonate with you. Where was Garo Bashir in May 2020, when an army captain with two others were kidnapped along Aoga at Oto Road? Where was he, two days later, when another commander was kidnapped again on that same route? Where was he in August, when two persons were kidnapped al along Iku and Obakoko? Where was he that same month? No. Sorry, few days before then, when people were just in front of their houses and they were kidnapped, one of them killed. Where was he uh, when in July, then later the Riola was kidnapped on his way to his own farm in Egypt? Where was he when an Awapoli lecturer was kidnapped along a Kore Power Road? And one of them, Mr. Deyemi, was killed for not paying sufficient ransom, not that he did not pay. Where was he when DJ Prince Abba was kidnapped along with his own party chairman on or what? A career road. Where was he when okay. nine passengers in a Siena bus last year, June, coming from Lagos were kidnapped in Israel? 
Where was we in November when the wife of the chief of staff to the governor of the state was kidnapped? Where was we when the governor himself escaped from this bandit? Where was we in November two months ago when when my king, when the king of our community was killed, was was killed along that same road? So, Where was we when the chief medical director of on those states? All of these of questions, Israel, all of these questions, Mr. All, all of these questions, case. Mr. Kalawale, leads me leads me to my next and final question to you. Um, what Governor Akari Delu has done may not necessarily sit well, sit well with the federal government, but uh, seemingly the undertone is to set the record straight, to bring some form of its security back and sanity back to his state. Um, what should other governors be doing um, now that they've seen what Governor Akari Delu has done? Should they be taking after him should they somewhat have a tailor-made style of dealing with these issues but also towing or borrowing a leaf from governor Kerry Delu? Um, because there are many other states where this is happening how do we deal with it going forward uh, even though the presidency doesn't feel the sense of urgency but states can one way or the other deal with this insecurity from their own perspective what should we be doing first you understand that uh when you fail to tackle issues, or when issues are not tackled in time, they dovetail to crisis. No, we will, we, there is some, there's a terrible syndrome we have in Nigeria. It's everywhere. When insecurity started, or when we started witnessing this dimension of kidnapping and banditry, I was one of those who went round, flitted with this campaign that let, let us stop this in good time before the thing spread around the country. But some people prefer to be politically correct, including my own state people who are now, you know, experiencing the rot. And then we said that uh, if we fail to stop this thing, all of us will partake, will become victims. It, ha it has already happened. But at this stage, we can't afford to just surrender and give our despondency a sit down and look at what we must take action. And the state government has taken action, not an unlawful action, not an illegal action. Mm. It is, for me, a sign of weakness if there is a single step backward. We are from on those states. We, are, we do not belong to the group of people that turn back onto perdition with their head bow, ego gross, confidence taking. We are not. The moment we take the right decision, we stand by it. The governor is not my friend, but on this. He will enjoy the support of every citizen and individual of the state. Okay. So let the, let the federal government be aware that the governor was not speaking for himself. He was speaking for the entire over 3 million population of the state. Okay. A time comes when we say, sorry, wait, a time comes when we say enough is enough to some things. They can't be killing our people, raping our women. And okay. now we say, let us take legal action. And the government will rise in their defense. Now, does that say, or is that inferring that the government, that they are the ones sponsoring this kidnapping, this criminality? Is that what they want us to believe? Well, so well, we, well, well we, 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 hope, we hope to hear from the federal government and maybe a U-turn, like you said, maybe the presidency or Garbashi, who was not speaking for the president. But that's the most we can take on this segment. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalawale uh, Johnson. He's a communications strategist and he joined us live from Abuja. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, see what Nigerians have to say about Akira Dulu's move against herdsmen in Ondo State. And right after that, it's time for my take. Yeah, this stage, it has to do with two different people with two different opinions. And I believe that uh, there should be dialogue. Why are you banning them? This is why I don't want you to ban them. No, they have to come to agreement. As long as this one is saying no and this one is saying yes, there has to be a balance somewhere. There has to be a balance or the one that is saying no, don't ban them and have a reason why. He is saying don't, no, you, they must stay there. Okay, this is what they are destroying or this is what they are not, this is what they are not doing well. Fine, give them time to pack up their load. Oh no, they will not. There has to be a dialogue, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it is right to ban the herdsmen from a state specifically because they are also Nigerians and they are also doing their business. But I, will, I expect the Ondo state government to put a kind of policy or a kind of rules that will curb whatsoever is their excesses. 
Uh, my position is that if the state government says they should leave, based on what they believe in, because they can't just ask them to leave. I think the federal, what the federal government should be asking for now is to determine the reason why they must leave. So if the reasons why they must leave are genuine, then they should leave. Uh, the yes men, they are destroying people's farm. So though that is not, they're not supposed to ban them, but they have to caution them so that they will stop destroying people's farm and properties. So that is just the thing. But in the other way around, they, they don't supposed to ban them because we all are one Nigeria. Uh, you know, my own opinion is that some states, like my state now, Lagos State, Southwest here, we don't want them. But in North, they want them because they are using them. Because I don't know what the SS men is doing in this country. What is the meaning of SS men? Who want them? Nobody want them, but federal government want them because they are people that they, they are using them for their own materials. We don't want them for Southwest. Eh? I don't know whether East, I'm sure East doesn't want it. But in North, they want them. Because they use them as a materials, as a cow. They use them to keep people, massacre people. So we, my opinion is that I don't support to warn them. We don't even warn them. It's time for my take. Now, too many lives have been lost to terrorism, to banditry, kidnapping and courtism. And yet lip service is paid to the numerous security situations bedeviling our country. The most unserious thing to do is to keep doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result. Why is it taking Mr. President so long to replace his service chiefs? Is that something that we need to know? If they are the best, why is insecurity in the country rising and getting worse instead of getting better? And for the issue in Ondo, you have a right as a Nigerian to live anywhere in this country. But every state has rules and regulations that you must abide by. Now, if you break those rules, be ready to face the music. Enough is enough. Let's learn to do the right things. Do things right. I am Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. And don't forget to follow us on social media or at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And you can watch a replay of this show on our YouTube at Plus TV Africa. Have a good evening.